Right, I will start. Uh, thank you everyone for joining our first ever webinar. Um, it's a pleasure to try and share our experiences and go through uh, floor safety today. Um, just a few bits of housekeeping. Uh, you'll be put on mute so you won't be able to talk. Um, hopefully you can see and hear me. Uh, put some uh, messages in the chat on your right hand side uh, if you can and uh, questions at the end of the uh, PowerPoint. We will uh, look at questions at the end and answer some that have come in previously and go through some that you're asking uh, through the webinar. But as I say, it's a pleasure to be here and our first ever webinar. Uh, we want to share our experiences. Uh, on the webinar is myself, Matthew. I've uh, been with the business, uh, Watco, for 21 years uh, in the UK and in the US. I've uh, got experience with site visits, contracting, uh, also road markings, uh, resin bound, resin bond and uh, decorative coatings so i've um, got broad uh experience which i would love to share with you uh steve chanter is on the call as well and he is the uh, product and operations director he's done a longer stint with me uh, with watco he's been with the business uh, 37 years started with the contracting division and went over to a uh, uk sales manager and now he's the product and operations director so combined uh, we have many many years experience and um I will start the webinar now. So um, just want to start with a statement on uh, floor safety from HSE. So 98% of all non-fatal accidents in the workplace are caused by slips, trips and falls, as stated by HSE's 1819 report, which makes floor safety one of the most crucial topics of conversation. 4.7 million days are lost due to non-fatal accidents with uneven, damaged and slippery floors being the main culprits. So today we'll look at slippery floors, uh, uneven and damaged floors. We will look at a, a later webinar, which we're planning for to do in about six weeks time. But today let's look at slippery floors. So what I'll do, I'll go through these areas. So we'll look at uh, sort of common issues uh, with your floors. Um, we'll also look at questions that you need to ask yourself uh, when looking at your industrial floor. Uh, we'll look at solutions. Uh, talk through uh, the solutions to treat uh, that dangerous surface. Uh, we'll look at PTV, uh, measuring slip resistance and sort of UK standards. And we'll also look at some other ways to uh, make your surfaces safe. So they're the main five key areas we'll look at. So uh, typical um, issues that you can find, uh, internal wet floors, uh, wet environments, wash down areas, Exterior services, obviously uh, winter conditions in the UK. We do have a few people on the call today from Dubai and New Zealand. I'm sure Dubai don't have, have the issue, but we in the UK have issues with our exterior services, especially in the winter months. Uh, machine surrounds, uh, shavings uh, hitting the surface. Um, so we we'll go through that. Ramps and steps, oily floors, checker plate surfaces and uh, decking. Um, so I just want to go through a few slides, a few photographs, which I've had from customers and a couple of nicks from the internet. So this first slide shows an area of a shutter door. So it's going from one um, outside area with wet, uh, wet, icy conditions going into a dry surface. So on this particular photograph, you can see a smooth, shiny area at the front, uh, which has been repaired. And you've got the more tamped sort of concrete beyond that. So that smooth, shiny area is a hazard and it needs to be addressed. So we, we generally recommend doing an anti-slip uh, area around the shutter door um, to allow for a safe uh, entrance into the, uh, into the unit. Um, wet floors, as mentioned, um, wet environments can produce slips, uh, obviously. Uh, so car, car wash areas, things of that nature uh, can, can be an issue. So let's address the floor underneath the wet so you're not going to slip on the floor so wet areas are an issue this was a photograph i had from a customer recently asking for a, an anti-slip uh solution to his checker plate surface i mean it screams at you um maintenance is an issue i.e the leaves the loose leaves so that's that's an issue which needs to be addressed um you've got algae on the surface again that needs to be addressed and then you do need to treat checker plate. We come across checker plate very, very regularly, and it's a very, very dangerous surface. Um, you wouldn't think so because it's raised metal surfaces, but that raised metal uh, can be a, a very um, 
uh, an anti-slip uh, issue. The next photo is checker plate again, but it's just to demonstrate um, the raised metal, which has been worn down with traffic. So that, that um, traffic that's gone on the surface has, has worn it very, very shiny and very smooth. And you do need to obviously address that. Uh, it, it can be a hazard. Uh, this is again, a customer photograph of some ramps going into a building. I mean, it just looks like a hazard. If you look at the front of the photograph, um, it's worn, the coating is worn through to the bare surface. Um, so you're gonna have a lip, uh, a trip hazard. So you do need to address that trip hazard. And it, it obviously just looks like an old worn surface. It needs, it needs addressing, it needs refreshing. Uh, with a, a, a new um, robust anti-slip surface. So we'll, we'll talk through that. Um, as mentioned, uh, metal shavings, wood shavings. Uh, I mean, I've been to sites in, in schools, in colleges, uh, around sort of uh, the wood um, CDT sort of areas where you've got wood shavings on the floor um, and they are a hazard. So in those areas, I would have uh, recommended a, a non-slip coating and an appropriate non-slip coating for that environment metal shavings from manufacturing hitting the surface staying on the surface they are they are um an issue garages uh, domestic garages commercial garages um very very obviously popular to, to to coat but coat it with an appropriate finish uh by the obviously underneath the van you've got the mechanics uh, changing oil etc uh, they, they're naturally going to get spillages on that floor so um treat treat that surface um similar picture oil uh, from, from the car tires. This is uh, a picture of a customer sent in of tire mark on the surface, rubber residue on the surface. So that rubber residue from the forklifts, uh, from the vehicles entering the building, is gonna create a slippy surface. Um, and I think a lot of us have seen this during COVID, but this is obviously some wetland area um, and some decking. Uh, I've got a bit of decking out the back of my uh, house and I forget on the first day of winter every time that that surface can be treacherous. So treat that with a with a coating, with a, another solution, which again I'll get onto. But wood in the winter months, especially, can be very very dangerous, especially in shaded areas. Um, it, it, it can be it can be lethal, basically. Um, so I've gone through sort of common sort of issues and areas uh, that we need to look at. I want to look at things, the questions that you need to ask yourself. So firstly, location. Where is the area in, in question? Is it outside, for instance? If it's outside, you need to consider things like uh, temperature. Uh, you need to consider the sun. Um, you need a UV stable. If you're gonna go down the coating route, you need a UV stable coating that will work in exterior environments. It won't fade, it won't color fade. It will the color will stay intact and uh, you won't get a complaint from a client or an end user, what have you, um, of, of color fade. So think about the location, think about, as mentioned, by a shutter door. Uh, you may want to go a little bit coarser uh, when you enter the industrial building. Um, is it around a machine? Is it in a store cupboard? All these things, it's, it's very, very important. Um, so yeah, the wear and tear of the area um, is, is something you need to, to look at. Is it, is it heavy trafficked? Application temperatures. Uh, we do a broad range of cold curing systems. Uh, we have a polyaspartic range, which will go off at minus 10, which is, is really unique. And yeah, we have anti-slip polyaspartic. So for instance, if you have a freezer room, the area is going to be cold and, and only certain coatings will go off and cure. So you need to make sure that you've got an appropriate coating for the application temperature. Think about air temperature to floor temperature. It's very, very easy uh, to raise the air temperature artificially. I speak to people with domestic garages, for instance, which they have an unheated domestic garage. What, what can I do? Um, so yes, they can raise the air temperature with an electric heater, but it's gonna take a lot longer to get that floor temperature up to make the, the coating cure. So just consider the floor temperature as well as the air temperature uh, and the environment. Area size. Um, with small, smaller applications, we do in, in, at Watco, we do have non-slip coatings, which are suitable for a smaller area size. They tend to be a coarser finish um, and you can put it around the machine and give that real coarse finish. If you're doing an anti-slip on a, a large area, like a large walkway or a large area of the industrial unit, 
it's better to have your non-slip uh, combined within the liquid. So we, we have a system called Safety Coat, for instance, which I'll get onto a little bit more in, 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 a, in a bit, but basically that one has beads dispersed within the liquid. So you're mixing two liquid parts together and you're rolling that onto the surface and you're not having to worry about sprinkling in and all that uh, labor intensive exercise. So think about the area size and the ease of use for the applicator. Um, I've gone into a little bit, but what will the area be used for? Um, is it going to be uh, a ramp, a real uh, busy ramp area outside a, a library, for instance? When we come out of COVID, these sort of areas will be heavy traffic. So you need a heavy traffic system. Um, when we talk about heavy use or heavy traffic, we tend to talk to people about twin pack materials. So we have epoxy systems, which are twin packs. We have polyaspartics, which are twin packs. So you need to consider a twin pack solution in an area that has heavy use or you may need to upgrade it further to like a, a GRP system, again, which I'll, I'll get onto a little bit later. Um, so think about that. What has the area been used for in the past? It's really, really important to think about um, the state of the concrete, for instance. So give you an example, again, a commercial garage has five, 10 years of oil uh, spilt on the surface. Without doubt, there's going to be oil penetrated into that concrete, and it's going to be very, very difficult um, to get all that oil out of the surface. You can do that with degreasing, you can do that with mechanical prep, um, but it's very difficult to get it out 100%. So think about an oil tolerant primer in that location. So an oil tolerant primer will help um, the coating to stick to the surface, and it will prevent the oil pushing off um, off, off the uh, the coating. Is it, is it new concrete? Uh, we have primers which can go on to um, very fresh concrete. Generally speaking, you need to leave concrete four to six weeks uh, before um, mechanical prep, etching, or and then the coating. Um, so think about um, primers. Think about uh, what sort of primer is suitable um, for that surface. Uh, what's the surface made of? Again, it's essential bits of information we need to know. Um, for instance, if it's outside of an asphalt car park, asphalt in its nature has got a certain amount of give in the surface. So we need to make sure um, that we've got a coating that will go on the surface with a certain amount of give. So use a non-slip product um, that has flexibility and it won't crack and look on unsightly very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, think about, is it wood? Is it metal? Is it um, MDF? Is it concrete? Think about the surface that you're treating and the appropriate coating needs to fit to that surface. I mean, again, give you another instance, galvanized metal. So you get a lot of galvanized uh, metal sta uh, stairs and you need to prime that galvanized surface. You need to blacken the surface um, and, and get that shiny galvanized surface uh, neutralized with like a tea wash or we do a product called Galva Prime uh, in a one liter and it covers 20 square meters, easy to do and then you can put your appropriate coating onto that surface. Shutdown time. Uh, shutdown time, what I'm trying to say there is, again, if you've got one access in and out of the building and you want to put a coating on that area, you need to consider um, how long you've got that area and how long um, you can basically um, get away with the coating to cure. So if you don't have a, a long enough uh, shutdown time, consider a rapid curing system. Uh, we do numerous rapid curing systems. Uh, for instance, we do a product called Fast Coat, we do a product called Safety Grip Rapid. Both come in an anti-slip versions and they will cure very, very quickly. But they are a coating, they will take um, like 12 hours uh, to put it back into heavy use, uh, a little bit quicker for, for touch dry. If that 12 hours is not good enough, you then need to think, okay, well, what do I need to do now? GRP, uh, you can screw down GRP systems, they're fiberglass reinforced plastic. We do numerous products in that range and um, you can put instant traffic on that surface. Uh, Self-adhesive tapes, again, we, we have that within our range. They can be used instantly. So just consider the shutdown time and again, we can, um, we can then look at an appropriate product um, for, for, that, for that time. Uh, slippery surfaces uh, and for the best anti-slip finish. So I just want to talk through some solutions um, that you can do for your for your area. So yeah, cleaning the floor, uh, anti-slip texture, specialist areas and, and tricky areas, areas that can't be painted. 
So clean the surface. It sounds it sounds silly, but that is the bait. That is one basic thing you can do to your surface. Just literally clean it. Um, we offer BioD, for instance, which can go on painted and non-painted surfaces. Uh, we have Concroft, which is a very, very powerful one, which we recommend for bare concrete. So again, look at the, the cleaner and is it appropriate for that surface? You don't want the, uh, the cleaner to be too aggressive to agitate the coating that you may have on the surface. Uh, if it's bare concrete, um, yeah, again, uh, the Concroft will work, but it w I wouldn't recommend it, say, for um, painted areas. So think about that um, and then and go from there. Safety coat. Safety coat is a fine uh, textured finish, which is used um, uh, in larger areas. So this particular product has a polymer bead, which uh, is used uh, dispersed within the liquid. Uh, it's a two part epoxy. It's a water based system. Um, this is where you've got large areas that you want to paint. Um, and it's that helping that you don't want a labor intensive coating to go on the surface. But also you want to think about the texture of the surface. The safety coat is a fine textured finish. You don't always want to go to the top of the tree with a coarse finish. The fine textured finish may be appropriate and it will be easy to clean. This one's fairly unique. The polymer bead, which is in the coating, uh, is, is rounded. Uh, so we consider an easily cleaned non-slip surface. So you can uh, use a mop um, as a clean surface and it's it's not going to drag the mop. So safety coat um, is, is, a, is an example of a, a, a finer textured uh, non-slip surface. So consider the texture um, as well. Um, we, we, we do heavier textured finishes. So there, this is a picture of our product called Safety Grip. Uh, Generally speaking, with the heavy textured systems, um, you're sprinkling those into the, into the system, into the coating. So with our safety grip, for instance, uh, this is used a lot on ramps uh, around machinery. And um, yes, basically you put a layer of paint down, it's an epoxy, it's 100% solid epoxy, very, very durable um, for heavy trafficked areas. You, put, you mix the coating together, the two liquid parts, sorry. You have a curing agent and a resin mix the two together, roll that out uh, onto the surface, sprinkle the grit in, which is like in a pepper pot, and then re-roll her over and, and even the grit out. So that's a technique that is used uh, for coarser finishes. Um, I mean, I've seen a uh, chicken feed technique where you're just chucking uh, the aggregate into a wet coat and then back rollering. I mean, that's another way of doing it. Um, but yeah, we, we with the safety grip, which is very, very popular, that's the sort of application method uh, that we recommend. So. There are different grades of aggregate, so I consider the, the, the texture for that approach for that area. Um, chemical storage areas, bund areas, um, again, you, you need to think about the usage of the area. So I, to give an example, we have a product called Chemico Acid Strength, which is um, uh, resistant to 98% per, uh, sulfuric acid. So if, if those acids are used in the area, you need to make sure you've got um, a chemical resistant coating that is appropriate for that area. So uh, on our data sheets, um, on the second page of all our data sheets, we have chemical resistant chart showing you the percentages of the chemicals and the, what the coating is resistant to. Uh, we have other systems like bun sealer, which contain a glass flake, and that just gives it an extra, extra strength against uh, chemical spillages. So yeah, think about uh, the usage and think about uh, the chemicals that may be used in these appropriate areas and, and use the um, use the system accordingly. Uh, I did an application about two, three weeks ago in Woking, and it's just to give an example of, uh, this is a mezzanine area in, in Woking, uh, where I, I applied a non-slip uh, surface to the mezzanine. What went through my head was, it's, it's a slightly flexible surface. So think about a, a coating that has a little bit of give. So with this one, I used Fast Coat, which is our, our twin pack polyaspartic. I uh, use a short pile roller uh, across the surface and it, it, this coating has got a, a some give in it. So it's not going to crack. It's not going to be an issue for uh, weeks, months down the line. It will flex with that mezzanine surface. So again, um, think about um, what the surface is made of. Uh, where you can't shut the area down, we, we, we touched on it a little bit earlier. We do have things like the GRP uh, fiberglass treads, uh, the safety edge. So this, this gentleman's applying 
safety edge GRP um, to some nosings of some steps. It's an unusual application because it's a black nosing, but normally it's white or yellow. Uh, they come in 55 by 55 or 70 by 30. But what I'm trying to get out here is um, if you don't, if you can't clean the surface, uh, for instance, think about something like GRP and just go straight, straight with that. If you can't shut the down the area down because of um, short shutdown periods, think about GRP because you can instantly traffic it. So this system is is really versatile, and I think I said it earlier. It's a step up from the coatings. You know, you, you can think of in my brain, you've got some self-adhesive non-stip systems. So I put that at the bottom of the list. Then you've got the heavy duty coatings and at the top of the tree is the GRP, the glass reinforced plastic. So they're, they're sort of where I, I see it fit. Um, and again, thinking about GRP uh, decking. Um, within our range, we have coatings that can go onto decking. Again, we do a twin pack polyaspartic system called Deck Safe Advanced, which can go onto uh, decking and uh, create a non-slip surface. But if you wanna take it that step further, think about decking strips. So we have the GRP in, in a decking strip, comes in three widths, it's pre-drilled, comes with screws, and you just literally um, screw it down for instant traffic. So maybe in a more sort of commercial environment, like out the back of a pub garden, uh, you may want a, a product which is a step up from a coating, and the, uh, the GRP decking strips would definitely uh, offer that. Um, PTV, I just wanted to uh, touch on PTV. I mean, all our non stip products are um, tested to um, the pendulum test value. Um, the video down here of my colleague Peter in the, uh, in the lab, basically um, spraying uh, the product with some water and doing a, a pendulum test. And he's doing several tests and, and taking the average to get a value against that uh, finish. The pendulum test uh, basically uh, recreates the sole of your shoe uh, walking and going across the surface. Um, and then that gives you a reading, uh, which can be a, a number, basically. So um, the, the PTV goes from high, moderate to low, and it's uh, low slip potential in wet uh, conditions. So um, to give you uh, an idea, so the high uh, end of the uh, PTV, um, it's going to be a rating of sort of zero um, to uh, 24. And then we have the moderate rating and then we have low. Low is sort of around the 36 mark plus. So all our products uh, are way above 36. But that just to give you an idea is um, the sort of standards in the UK is PTV. Um, as mentioned, that bullet point there, it's recognised in the court of law, UK court of law that is, and it's recognised by HSE. Um, obviously, they, they drive a lot of uh, things in the UK. Um, so PTV, you'll find it on all our technical data sheets. Uh, we've recently uh, added a, a technical button on our website, um, and you can see the uh, the readings uh, uh, there. So yeah, PTV is is, is the way forward. Um, there's a question by uh, someone that came in before the uh, the webinar, which I'll get onto in a minute about our ratings and how they fall, and I'll, I'll cover that. Um, I'll cover that shortly. Um, so we've gone through uh, slippery floors and coatings and GRP um, and how you can address your, your slippery surface. I just wanted to touch on a few other things you can do uh, to make your areas safe. Um, so number one there is repair your uneven surface. So in six weeks time, we'll have our second webinar and we'll go through uh, how to repair your concrete, how to repair your asphalt, uh, we do numerous things uh, like our, we do bitumen, for example, and outside where you can instantly traffic um, a pothole uh, with your vehicle or your um, uh, foot traffic uh, and, and various other things you need to look at with repairing your floor. I mean, the amount of times I've been to site and I see a, uh, an expansion junction, so you've got the cross uh, where the expansion joints uh, sort of cross over on the concrete slab and they're damaged in that cross there. There's damage in and around there. The expansion joint may have pulled out and it is it is a hazard it is a trip it is a trip um, problem so in six weeks we'll talk through that but yeah repair your floor basically um, I come across 5s uh, fairly regularly and customers and, and clients do order products from us to uh, comply or get with 5s 5s is is 
it's on it's on the same sort of uh, lines of lean as just in time so you may have heard it in those in those uh, terms but it's it's basically good housekeeping so it, it came from i think it was a japanese guy back in the 1950s and it's um the, the s's are uh, standardized sort uh, set in order shine and sustain so they're the, the sort of five s's but i i see it a little bit simpler than that is is clean uncluttered safe and well organized so i'll give you an example if you have a walkway and it's not marked out correctly um, you're going to get colleagues putting boxes putting uh, goods in that walkway and it's a hazard it's a hazard to get to your your fire door is a hazard uh, the forklift can't go down the walkway so yeah keep your area um, in good order and that that sort of complies with 5s i mean i've had customers order a lot of uh, heavy duty line marking tape so that third bullet point there um, that sort of helps to comply with 5s and it helps to um, identify uh, walking um, walkways in, in your factory floor um, so yeah line marking uh, hazard areas so if you don't want uh, goods or products to be um, put in a by a fire door you know do the hash yellows for example um, and we have liquids uh, paints that can do that and uh, line marking that can do that um, highlight the hazards which I just mentioned uh, identify walkways and safety areas proper footwear sounds pretty basic but if you've got a very smooth foot going into a wet environment you know think about what you're doing so you know you could you could do signage for that um if you want someone to wear steel steel coat uh steel taps um uh foot, footwear you know make sure that they're, they're using the appropriate footwear so if something does fall on their foot um it, it's not going to be an issue uh signage um make sure the walkways uh are properly sign posted if you don't want visitors in your uh, in your um, environment coming into the main factory, obviously uh, put appropriate signage up to uh, make sure they go to the uh, reception area instead of into the uh, into a dangerous area where there could be forklift traffic, for instance. So signage is is very very uh, important. But ultimately, um, contact Watco. I mean, we do we do have solutions uh, for everything you come across um we recently launched an app for instance um which came uh, about three four weeks ago uh where you can do video calls with us so you can literally download the app and um uh, you can do a video call directly to someone with experience so the, the team i'm in the team i've got the 20 plus years experience um i've got colleagues with 10 six seven five years and the, these people are on the end of the phone and they've had training and they've been to sites and they know uh, what to look out for. So do that video call, uh, do that live chat, give us a buzz, and uh, we can literally uh, talk you through it from start to finish uh, with your with your issue. Um, so that's basically it on on for me really. Uh, I do want to um, just go through a couple of quick questions that we had come in uh, before the webinar. Uh, one of the questions uh, was about that R rating. Um, the, the question was saying uh, why we use our ratings and not PTV. I think it's a bit, obviously, a bit of confusion there. We don't use our ratings for, for what I explained earlier. It's, it's a UK standard to use PTV. Uh, our ratings, I see that as more of a European, like an EU uh, directive. Uh, I know a German office uses uh, our ratings. So, uh, yeah, I think there may be a bit of confusion there, but we are definitely all about. Uh, PTV, uh, 100%. Uh, second question that I had come in was, is there a quick uh, drying product for use on steps or routes with heavy footfall? I've sort of got into it, but yeah, I mean, the the quick dry, the quick, the quickest would be the GRP, uh, the step cover, the safety edge. We do GRP sheets, so that ramp picture I showed you earlier, uh, going into that building. Um, the solution really was GRP sheets. Um, lined up one next button next to each other, not a trip hazard, all lined up nicely and screw and glue it into the system with it with a glue it with a mastic. So that's the quickest. Otherwise, as mentioned earlier, you're looking at the polyaspartics, uh, quick drying products, or we do the 100% solid epoxies like the safety grip. Um, that that they are rapid curing, but there is that that thing of um wait, you still have to wait until it fully cures. So hopefully that that's answered those two questions. Um, I think Steve's got an eye on what's coming 
while I've been talking. Um, so Steve, over to you. Yes, thanks, Matt. And thanks everyone for joining us and to everyone who sent us some questions. We've had some good ones, which uh, I've been making a note of. Um, we're being asked questions all day, every day about floors, as Matt says. So, you know, keep, keep sending them now while we're talking or ring us, contact us at any time with any flooring uh, issue and we'd be very pleased to help. Um, but the first one I've written down here is one that we're asked quite a lot. Um, and that is if I've made my floor safe by making it anti-slip, I've got to have a textured surface. And once it's textured, um, isn't it very difficult to keep clean? If I've got a heavily textured surface to make it safe, how am I going to keep it clean? Well, yes, a heavily textured surface is more difficult to keep clean. And when we're talking to people about making their floors safe, um, we like to recommend those for specific areas, such as around an oily machine or just inside a doorway, that sort of thing. They're not impossible to clean. Uh, if you're using the right thing, like a stiff brush or stiff broom and some uh, degreaser, that'll keep it clean. But if, if we're restricting the more heavily textured anti-slip surfaces to real focal hazard points, and then doing the rest of the floor area, the larger area, with something which is much easier to clean, such as the safety coat that Matt mentioned, then all you've got to do is to address the uh, the, the coarse textured surfaces. You can just brush the and sweep any contamination off that onto the neighbouring smoother surface where it's easier to pick up with a, a mop or something like that. And really the safety coat that Matt mentioned, which has got, doesn't have grit, it's got this polymer bead in, is really answering the question that we were asked for years, have you got an anti-slip surface uh, for my floor, which is easy to clean? Um, one here, uh, can your anti-slip coatings go directly onto metal? Um, yes, uh, some can, and that's quite important because if you're making a floor uh safe with an anti-slip coating um what's on the floor can vary you can get a concrete floor but you can get metal duct covers running through it and metal channels uh manhole covers that sort of thing which can become slippery so we've got uh, uh coatings where you just basically uh paint over the whole lot metal concrete wood uh just go straight over it um do I need a primer before applying non-slip coatings? Um, not usually, but when somebody comes to us to talk about a floor, we'll always ask questions about what the type of floor is. And although our products are designed to be used generally without primers, um, depending on what we find out about your floor and what type of floor it is, what, what, what is the concrete actually like if it is concrete, we may recommend a, a primer, but generally speaking, no. Um, but we would decide based on your particular floor. Um, no, no. I've got a, I've got what's supposed to be a non-slip floor, but it still gets slippery. Um, this was actually going back to one of Matt's first points: um, floor maintenance. So uh, even if we've got something like safety coat which has got a fine texture to it uh it is important to just keep the floor clean um and sometimes you can have a clean floor which is non-slip but a patch of oil or grease that somebody's attempted to clear up with a with a mop and a bucket of water you can then end up just smearing um oil or grease over the whole floor and making turning to making the surface slippery so I've always tended to, if, if somebody said, oh, I've got an anti-slip floor or I've used one of your anti-slip floor coatings and it's still slippery, degrease it, um, degrease the coating. And yeah, we've got powerful degreasers which won't damage or, or, or soften uh, an existing painted surface. Um, yes, you mentioned that some of your non-slip coatings have got pre-blended aggregate but others have to have grit sprinkled into the surface. How, how do you get the grit even? Um, that is something that uh, does concern people because if you've 
Matt, Matt re referred to scattering grit into the surface of a wet coating. It's impossible to be able to scatter that in evenly. And if the grit isn't evenly distributed, it makes the floor look very patchy. The way that it reflects light uh, can vary, more aggregate in the surface, less light reflection. So you can end up standing at one end of a, a warehouse looking across the floor and it's all patchy. Um, so the safety coat that we mentioned earlier, um, that overcomes that problem by having the aggregate pre-blended. You don't have to scatter anything into the surface, just roller it out and it produces a completely even finish. It's even, easily cleaned finish. Um, but where we've got products where you do have to scatter grit in, the, the, the size of the grit and the thickness and type of the coating is all very important, the relationship between the two. So as I say, because it's impossible to by hand sprinkle grit evenly into the surface, um, the coatings are designed so if you're doing a, a heavily textured coating, say on, on a ramp uh, or around an oily machine, you would sprinkle the grit into the surface um, and then use the same roller to just back roller it, roller it backwards and forwards, and it beds the grit into the coating so that the, 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 the grit is absolutely held firm. But it also, with the way that the products are put together, distributes the grit absolutely evenly within the wet coating, so you don't end up with an uneven, uh, an uneven finish. Um, this is one where uh, it's good. We've, we get asked a lot. I've got a very smooth concrete floor, which I'm told is power floated. How do I make that uh, safe? How do I make that non-slip? Well. With a power floated, power floated floors can present all sorts of problems when it comes to uh, applying coatings in the conventional way. Um, if, uh, if you just wanted to make it straightforward anti-slip, you could get a shot blaster or grinder into the area, but all that's going to do, and that will texture the surface, but you've lost that high quality, smooth uh, power float look to the floor. Um, if you just want to put make the floor anti-slip but retain the appearance of the power floated concrete itself, um, we've got clear anti-slip sealers uh, with pre-blended anti-slip particles in which will go directly onto uh, power floated concrete, which we think is pretty unique. Um, so you don't have to shot blast it, you don't have to grind it, you don't have to prepare it in any way other than just making sure that it's clean and dry and then a clear anti-slip surface to go over the top. Um, if, a, if a coloured coating is desirable we've got um, a special primer, a power float primer, which goes directly onto uh, a power float concrete surface and once you've primed it with that you can overcoat it with basically anything, uh, certainly any of our uh, suite of, um, of uh, anti-slip floor coatings will go on top of the power float primer. So if you've got a very hard smooth concrete floor um, and you don't want to grind it, it's not really on to start acid etching it, it doesn't really work on that kind of surface. Um, using a special, this special primer or the special sealer which will go direct onto the surface will make these very hard smooth uh, floors safe. Um, got here, wh which of your repair products do I use to repair bits of damaged floor before the coating? Um, we've got a very wide range of uh, floor repair products from just repairing minor blemishes in the surface to flexible products for expansion joints to shallow repairs in surfaces, deep repairs, repairs to damaged step nosings and all that sort of thing, which we're uh, are covering as, as a separate subject. Um, but uh, talk to us, we will recommend the right one for, uh, for your repair, depending on what that type of repair is. Uh, they're all designed, of course, to go off really fast, because if you've got to get repairs done, uh, you want to get the floor repaired and then overcoated 
um, you know, and ready for overcoating as, as quickly as you possibly can. Um, the last one that I made a note of here, and if I've missed any, don't worry, we'll we'll get back to uh, everybody else who's left a, a, a question uh, separately. Um, are epoxy resin paints best for non-slip? Well, um, yeah, probably so, uh, because when you put a non-slip particle into a coating, uh, by the nature of doing that, when the coating is put into use and you've got wheels on it, you've got vehicle traffic or you've got uh, pedestrian traffic, you're getting a you're getting a, a, a friction where the wheel or the shoe is coming into contact with the surface of the grit uh, and it's pulling at it, it's pulling at it to stop the vehicle or the foot slipping. So that grit has got to be stuck into something which is pretty strong. So otherwise it just wear out. And uh, you know, you've probably, a lot of you have seen anti-slip surfaces which have got like a conventional grit in where in the aisleways where everyone walks, they've worn smooth, uh, and yet along the edges towards by the walls where it doesn't really get much traffic, you can still see a texture in it. So yes, you want to make sure that you've got the anti-slip particle in something which is gonna to continue to hold the anti-slip particle. Uh, and uh, in that respect, epoxy resins, which are two pack products uh, are better than, uh, I mean, it, the, the, the worst thing really is just taking an ordinary single pack floor paint and throwing grit in. It's just not ever gonna last. It's not, it's not gonna work. Um, We've got other two pack uh, systems. Matt mentioned the polyaspartic, which is a very unusual type of um, resin technology, which uh, produces all sorts of different characteristics, such as this drying at the minus 10 degrees centigrade, um, very rapid drying, so you can get floors back into use the same day, that sort of thing. And we've got, we use that, that uh, resin technology as two part resin technology to hold anti slip aggregates. Uh, as well, so yeah, with anti-slip to get to get something that's going to continue to hold the aggregate is going to continue to keep the floor safe. Um, yeah, I'd recommend looking for uh, a, a two-part product such as epoxy resin or, in our case, polyaspartic as well. Um, that's covered the questions that have come in. Thanks very much indeed for for that, and thanks again for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you found it informative. I do appreciate you attending the webinar, our first webinar, and I hope um, it went, all went smoothly. Uh, just um, a little reminder um, that we will be having a, a second webinar on repair, uh, so look out for that. Also, um, we will be sending out an ebook uh, on floor safety, so all the attendees will be emailed an ebook that we produced uh, towards the end of last year. And also, as a thank you, uh, there'll be an offer code on the email um, if you would like to uh, purchase anything from us but ultimately thank you for attending have a good afternoon uh, hopefully see you later thank you bye-bye